Hello and welcome. Today my guest is Joyce Gibbles. Welcome to you, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Bev. So lovely to connect the way that we have. We're both podcasters and we're both in the health space for different reasons. So tell me more about yourself and what it is that you do. Yeah, sure. No problem. So I'm a mindset coach and I help women with overcoming their food cravings and emotional eating in a confident way. So what that basically means is that um, when you eat certain foods like chocolate or ice cream, you know, we all eat them at some point, but when you basically feel guilty after that or you just don't feel good or you just eat more than you wanted to and that becomes like a certain pattern over and over again or it can even turn into binging um that is something that is you know self-sabotaging and can be not aligned with your goals and can actually be really problematic in some ways and i actually speak from experience myself because i've basically been emotionally eating ever since it was four years old i actually just found that out recently um after after doing my own work that it started um when i was four years old because I didn't know how to process my emotions. Um, basically, my household and my family, um, I wasn't really allowed to be angry or be sad or basically express any emotions that's considered negative, <laughs> quote unquote. Um, and so that made it really, really hard. And then um, a lot of like childhood trauma happened that was just really hard to deal with. And I was very insecure, had very, very low self esteem. Um, that externally got, um, or not really led into, but I was bullied in the last couple of years of primary school and high school as well. And then around that time, I really started uh, to diet because I just had so much weight gain and I felt like I had to diet. And then at the same time as well, I um, developed hypothyroidism. So that means that my thyroid, um, which is like, uh, it's in your throat and it regulates like your metabolism and um, it's it's basically like your hormones. It's very, very essential for it to work properly. And with that, obviously, when you have a low, slow metabolism, usually a lot of weight gain is aligned with that as well. So that happens as well. Um, and so because I put so much pressure on myself with just dieting, but then it resulted in overeating and falling off the bandwagon and stuff like that. Um, I didn't really find a way for me to deal with it in a proper healthy way as I would like, because I would start this new diet and then I didn't go through with it or how much I actually tried and tried to try it. I didn't lose the weight. Um, or just couldn't keep up with it. And I didn't understand why I was like, I'm trying everything and I'm doing everything right. And I'm still not getting the result that I want. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. um, and then my hormones actually got way, way worse. Um, and I got uh, diagnosed with PCOS as well, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. So basically I had a lot of cysts on my ovaries. I think I still have, uh, haven't tested it recently, but, um, and like things like acne and hair loss, but also like hair overgrowth, hirsutism, um, and obviously the weight gain, um, mm. I'm really hard to, to lose the weight and, um, hormonal imbalance. So, um, I had high testosterone, um, I had high insulin levels and, and things like that, um, which obviously makes it really hard to lose the weight. And yeah, I couldn't find my way of getting the results that I wanted until I basically really went inwards and focused on my mindset and connecting that again with my body, uh, mind and spirit. And yeah, doing that work and kind of looking at what is really going on here. What is the root cause of, you know, my cravings and my binging? Like what is really going on here? And once I became aware of that and healed from that, like, honestly, <laughs> the cravings and binging just disappeared. Like, I, yeah, it's still, it's still really, in a matter of months, 
what took mm. me 20 years to <laughs> to get yeah. over so it's yeah <laughs> yeah well that's a big journey you know um it is and I think, yeah i think what i heard from that too is that you tried a lot of things but mm -hmm. there yeah. was obviously a tipping point but often we stay in that comfort zone you know so we stay with the latest fad diet or we stay with you know what the doctor yeah. has told us we're not sort of um, tapping into ourselves. So why do you think we make those choices to stay there? So, for example, you talked about, mm -hmm. you know, overeating on certain foods. So we yeah. know it's not working. We know we feel terrible. So why do we often stay in that comfort zone? Mm, good question. So for me, um, my opinion is that it is short-term pleasure, right? So we want to have that chocolate because it tastes so good and we get that immediate relaxation and feel good, like, oh, if I have that chocolate, like you're numbing your emotions that you don't want to experience, which is like stress, anxiety, angriness, whatever it is. Um, and we just numb it by eating that chocolate. Plus it just gives us the pleasure. It's like, oh, it's also the reason why we smoke, why we drink alcohol, why we Netflix, right? So it is that short-term pleasure that we really love to, to have right now instead of looking at your long-term pleasure, which is like a healthy, vibrant, energetic um, life. And it doesn't matter what you look like or what your body is like, I think. And that's what I, um, you know, I'm so passionate about and what my mission is. Um, but how you feel. So how do you want to feel long-term? But because it's usually so intangible, right like you can really reach it it's in the future um we feel like yeah but i want to have that chocolate now or i want to have the ice cream now um and so we attach a lot of pain to it and so by reversing it by addressing more pain to eating the chocolate now and more pleasure into the future things what you really want to achieve like you can kind of like um change things around mm. and I think other things why we stay in our comfort zone is basically just you know creating certain habits like you've gotten into that like what I did for example I'll give you an example is that basically I've learned from a young age every time that I came home from school I got to have a lolly or a candy wherever you are in the world <laughs> mm. um you know so every time that I came home with my parents like even if I do it now when I come home to my mom or my dad like I'll go and have something sweet because, you know, I grew up with that. It's such a habit. Or when I come home after a tough day of work, I want to have something sweet. So it is really a habit that you need to undo and then change into a habit that you do like that does serve you because mm. it just didn't serve me anymore. And I think it's also um, re restrict yourself. So you restrict yourself with your diet. Um, or you, you stay in your comfort zone because like you think there is a difference between good or bad foods. And so you feel like if you go and live healthier, that you can't have the chocolate, you can't have the ice cream, right? But you can. Yeah. I just choose not to, or I choose not to overeat on it because I still allow myself to eat my chocolate. Like <laughs> I just, you know, like I don't restrict myself and that's usually what happens. Mm. And so how can we become aware of those sort of underlying causes or the reasons why? Because I think you mentioned mm -hmm. overeating, emotionally eating and cravings. Yeah. So do that... Yeah have similar root causes and how if you know how can we become more aware that hey hang mm -hmm. on this is a problem this is what I do when I you know get upset yeah. or when I'm angry yeah exactly exactly well you kind of say it already Bev uh, it usually has to do with a lot of emotions so definitely when it comes to emotionally eating and says it already it has to do with emotions um so that can be one. Uh, another thing is, um, as I actually shared in my uh, story as well, like childhood traumas. And, you know, when I say trauma, it doesn't mean like I might have experienced like a lot of trauma, but something can be traumatic for your brain when you don't even realize that it actually was that traumatic, right? Peers or somebody when... Um, when you experience something as a child could have said something to you that actually had such an impact on your 
self that we just created some beliefs like everybody has those like you know um even for example like i was raised with i have to work really really hard to earn a lot of money or when it comes to food like i was told that i had to finish my plate yes. every single every bite child. so that's why <laughs> yeah yeah i had to finish my plate because like otherwise i wouldn't get dessert or i was gonna be put upstairs to my room and so i still like i have still had to untackle that whole okay i don't need to finish my plate like it is okay um and yeah so to answer your question of becoming more aware, um, obviously you need to become aware. You need to realize like, okay, maybe I'm eating something more than I actually would like. And often that um, shows itself in feeling guilty or just feeling drained even. I think personally, if you eat something that doesn't serve you, that it just feels you, that leaves you feeling um, very tired and just like, ugh, or very bloated as well. Like that is usually a sign that, something is not serving you and um yeah so emotions can be uh, childhood trauma can be um it, it it has honestly it can have different um causes but usually it is just two so these two are combining like the over desire so like the emotion and just you know you want to eat something but you don't really need it and the other thing is over hunger which relates to um your hormones or your your physical need for food so like it can actually can be actual hunger but also if your insulin levels for example aren't balanced like that's also how you crave more sugar because your blood sugar um, levels aren't just stabilized so they go up and down up and down up and down that's why i'm like i need sugar but you don't really need it so those are usually the two different ones and then i um obviously focus with my coaching more on the emotional mindset desire part of it um, and yeah, how you become aware of everything is knowing that you are doing it. So reflect on, okay, that, that is basically the first step. Like you want to go to before you eat, like reflecting, okay, am I really hungry? Um, but often if you've been into that binging overeating cycle for so long, it is actually really hard to do so. Like often end up with myself as well. Like I couldn't stop myself. I had to eat it or I could like pause it for 20 minutes and I overate again still. Um, so a great start is to reflect after, like if you ate something, okay, how do I actually feel right now? Um, was I actually hungry or was there something else? Right. And eventually you can do that beforehand and think like, okay, if I'm eating because I'm tired, what do I need to do then? Or am I eating because I'm stressed? Like, what do I need to do then? Or what is it that I believe that I now need to eat, right? What is really going on? Um, and that is just like a little starter um, to become aware. Obviously, it, it takes a lot of digging and mindset work to really go to that cause of what is actually causing this. Yeah. Mm, yeah. A lot of things there, you know, because it's, it's yeah. never one thing, you know, it feels like it's a no, real no. mishmash of it, things. It, yeah, and, it was never one thing for me either. And like once I went through something, like something else came up, I'm like, oh, so it, it's <laughs> yeah. like an onion. It has yeah. like lots and lots of layers. Yeah. And the thing is, once you do that work, like it not only helps you with the cravings and the overeating and just feeling really good about yourself, but it also has like a big influence on everything else because you become more vibrant and energetic. Your relationships um, will improve, um, you know, like work, leisure balances, I would like to call it improves as well. Like, so it's, it's, it's amazing on a lot of fronts. Yeah. And I get that, you know, so, so the first level is this awareness and then you make the decision and you've, you've decided you want to change this. So what are some of the common ways that we self-sabotage? Yeah, so what I hear a lot and what I used to tell myself is, you know, you want to think about, okay, what do I actually say, right? So a lot of self-sabotaging sentences or thoughts that we can have is, 
oh, I'll just start tomorrow, or this is going to work, or I deserve it. I, I'll just have like one little piece and that's it, right? And I deserve to have it. Like I, I've been so good this week. I can have that piece of chocolate. You know, one, one bite doesn't hurt or even like it's too hard to live a healthy lifestyle. So those are all, you know, excuses that stand in the way of where we actually want to go. And um, so th that is basically how we self-sabotage ourselves. And that can be different to anybody. It can change as well, depending on, you know, what it is that you crave or what is actually happening. Um, and yeah, to kind of overcome it is just really important to stay in touch with your why. Like, why is it that you really want to live that healthy lifestyle? Um, yeah, that is, that is probably my number one tip when it comes to that, like really figure out what it is that you want. And if it's not strong enough, like do a little visualization or just stay in touch with the feelings that it will give you once you've achieved that. Mm. I see a lot of my clients have improved through this time of being in physical distancing and, and you know, physical isolation. Yeah because they get a lot of pressure from their families or their peers and they sabotage, oh God, yes. you know, they sabotage what their best intentions are because yeah. like you mentioned, you know, the mother wants to feed the daughter or the, you know, whatever it is. And mm -hmm. I find that really interesting, that dynamic. So for some people, for example, let's say they um, over drink, they have too much alcohol. Yeah. This has been either the worst or the best time for people like that. So yeah. some of them, which are more pure, you know, they drink for the socialness of it. They've done better than the others who mm -hmm. just go, well, nobody's going to tell me I can't drink, you know, the, the yeah. mindset <laughs> stuff. Um, and so what are some of the strategies that you see as actually really vital to conquering food cravings and emotional eating? Yeah, so I think I shared it a little bit as well. Like for me, it was really important to connect my body, mind and soul um, because what it did is I became more attuned into listening to my body, which means when am I actually hungry? How much do I actually need to eat so that I'm full? Uh, I couldn't do that anymore. Like I just... I just had to re like basically reset myself in order to really find out like, okay, when am I actually hungry? How much do I eat? And that also is with the plate thing because like, you know, I scooped up my plate and then I felt like, Oh, I need to finish my plate. So I finished my whole plate, but then I was like over full and I ate too much. Um, and it also helped with that whole connection to love my body more. Um, to really fully accept my body as it is um, every single part um, right now because I couldn't do that. I was very insecure in how I looked and that was basically my reason to go and diet in the first place because I felt like all oh, I think I've lost Joyce. Can you hear me, Joyce? <laughs> That's okay. So yeah, the strategies is uh, connecting with body, mind and soul. Um, so what it did, does and did for me as well is that I connected my body and mind together. So that meant that I was then able to really realize, okay, am I hungry right now? Um, how much do I eat, need to eat to eat? like to be full and what do I actually need to eat that will satisfy me? And that could be physically, you know, like healthy things or mentally even like maybe I just really need that chocolate right now. And that is easier to um, be in balance with ones that is really um, like balanced and stabilized because I, I didn't know when I was hungry. I didn't know when I was full. As I said, like with the plate, like I just scooped up my plate and I just ate everything um, 
but I was then, I ate too much. I was over full because I felt like I had to finish that plate. Um, but I didn't, I didn't have to do that. And the other thing is that I wanted to find my root cause. So really finding out what it is that I was actually craving because it's not the food that we're craving. We're craving something else mm. and that can be different. Right. So like sometimes it just is more sleep. Sometimes it's just more relaxation, but the numbing of the food, that instant pleasure, as we, as we talked about, that is what I thought I needed, but it wasn't the case. Um, and another strategy that aligns with that is that connecting with your emotions. So instead of numbing it, you want to really connect with those emotions and urges. And that is really scary because often people don't really know how to do that. We, or at least I <laughs> have never been thought how to properly deal with my emotions and it was scary. And, you know, we have a lot of thoughts in our brain in general. And for me, it really worked to see those thoughts from afar as somebody that wasn't me. So when I was thinking like, oh, so tomorrow I really deserve this right now. I really need to have that chocolate and I can't stop. And I just basically taking a breather and just seeing those thoughts from afar um, helped me to kind of like calm down and think like what thoughts actually serve me right now. Are those thoughts that I'm seeing over there, are they actually true? Or do I want to think something else? Do I want to believe something else? So that was a big game changer for me. Um, because you're always, you always have the option and choice to think something different and to change your life around that. Oh, I agree about that. And I'm just thinking when you talk there that we haven't been taught about how to really create emotional regulation for ourselves and not labeling mm -hmm. things good or bad. What's one recommended action you could give for the listeners? Yeah. So I thought about that. I was like, Oh, what do I want to share? And I find it really hard to do because every individual is so different, but what really made a difference for me is uh, make it fun. So and I love actually how this story aligns with everything because that aligns again with the pleasure. So you want to create that instant pleasure, but you don't want to find that pleasure with food. So you want to, or having to overeat on that food. That's what I mean. So you want to make it fun. So instead of eating, what other things can you think of that really makes you happy? Right. Um, for me, like I love dancing and singing. So when I'm like, stressed or tired or whatever yeah sorry yeah so um i thought about this and i was really thinking like oh what do i want to say on this question because everybody's so different and there is a lot of different steps that one can take depending on what they have done and not done and you know their personal situation which i truly believe in but I think an overall action step that is doable for everybody is make it fun. And I really love how this aligns because it is, again, um, has to do with the short-term pleasure. So instead of finding that short-term pleasure in food and overeating, you want to think, okay, instead of eating, what other fun things can I do that really makes me happy? So for me, it is singing and dancing. Like I love singing and dancing. And if, I can't deal at that moment with that certain emotion or thing that is really going on because, you know, I've, I've got other things to do. I really make sure that I just like sing or like do a happy dance. And I love to start my mornings with that as well to get me in a good head space. So that is really, really good. So, and another thing is that often, you know, you, you can do it, but if you've been overeating and binging a lot of the times, I don't really recommend it, but you can, you need to find a reward, right? So you have a goal, you want to have a reward with that. But instead of having food as a reward, you can do something else. So like what non-related food thing can you think of that is lovely for you? So like maybe it is a massage or maybe it is like a girl's night with your friends, right? So like make something that you can look forward to that keeps you on track with the thing with the thing that you want to do um and you know 
I think it's also a general one to make just yummy food or if you have a certain snack or meal that you really like but you know it's not really healthy like can you make it like more healthy but still very tasty or make it a fun challenge like I just I don't know like I've got heaps of challenges <laughs> that I like to do to keep it um, interesting for me like I love to try new recipes so that is one thing that you know keeps me going and okay I can actually eat this or at least yeah or also changing the unhealthy to healthy meals as well like basically everything that I try to do is to make it fun or find a way that is you know okay enough for you to keep you going because that's why diets don't work that you just are going to do something that you don't like that isn't aligned with your lifestyle so you want to make that good happy fun choices that will make it possible for you to make a lifelong change um yeah. you know like for yeah, example that's, that's i don't exactly. really like yeah that's the thing and for example like i don't really like celery but i know it's really good for me because um it has a lot of water in it and it helps also to reduce bloating which i also had like i had a lot of get gut issues as well but when i make it into a smoothie or a juice like i do like it so that's also like trying to figure out okay how can i eat the things that are really nourishing for me in a way that is lovely yeah. right awesome so yeah that's that's what i would recommend awesome and so what are your tips for living fabulously um, yeah, I, I think do something that gets you excited to get out of bed for, right? So obviously we all have days and times where it's not really possible and that's okay too. So actually yesterday I just had a big week um, and I just felt really tired and headachy and I'm like, well, okay, I'm just going to take it slowly. So I actually made a puzzle so that was something exciting <laughs> and to get out of bed for us so, so I try to really choose and do something that just helps me to get excited for the day um, when I really can so I also honor when I'm not and that has to do with my second tip is um, energy management so I really want to listen to my body and be connected with that so if I really need to slow down I'll slow down if I have a lot of energy and productivity, I'll just go and like work really hard or do what I want. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not pushing myself to do a certain exercise when I'm really, really tired and, and I need to slow down, but I do do it when I'm energetic. Um, and it also really helps for me to have a morning routine. So that is like a healthy habit for me that again, sets me up for the day and makes me really productive because then my body and mind knows like, okay, this is what we're going to do and now we're ready to rock and roll and awesome. i think my last tip is intention setting so what do i want to achieve for today but also the night before then i can think about like uh what do i want to focus on tomorrow but also what do i actually want to eat tomorrow because it's also scientifically proven that if we not in this right moment because then we tend to make the wrong choices but if i think about the night before okay what do i actually want to eat tomorrow what is going to serve me well um we are then more likely to stick to, to those food choices as well so that is a, a really good tip to, mm. to share as well instead of you know leaving it for the last second to decide <laughs> yeah. what you want to do it's yeah. more when, easy you to when you're hungry <laughs> lot of, lot of yeah, people when you're hungry it's and it's too late yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> thank yeah. you for those tips Joyce and you can find Joyce Dibbles at her website life to enjoyce.nl and also on Instagram she says she's busy on Instagram so I'll put those yep. in the show notes for you because the spelling is just a little different and what I love about our conversation now Joyce is that you talk about choice and this is a thing that I think is really mm -hmm. important is people need to exercise their choice. You know, that freedom to choose is actually yours. You know, yeah. you often think that your environment or the circumstances dictate things. And to, mm -hmm. in some situations, they may. But honestly, what you put in your mouth, what you do with your mind, what you do with your body, those are all choices that you're making every single day. So 100%. all of the simple things that you're talking about, none of these cost huge amounts of money. 
they are actually creating pauses in our day to stop mm -hmm. and actually reflect, you know, take the next step, plan ahead. All of these things yeah. are right within everybody's reach. So I think it's just taking that first brave step to dig mm -hmm. into the root cause. And when you understand mm -hmm. that, then it's when you can actually, you know, be free of these kind of things. It's, it's really, yeah. you, you locked up in a, in a food craving or emotional eating. It's really limiting in a lot of ways. So it thanks is, so yeah. much for sharing that. And thanks so much for being with me today. Of course, no problem. And yeah, like you said, it's, it's just taking the baby steps so one step at a time. That's, that's it.